there's a key question that needs to be asked. Where does sickness, disease, and suffering come from? What's the root cause? It's like a lot of people have these vices, you know, it could be pornography, drugs, tobacco, alcohol, phone, it's sugar, it's stress. And then we put ourselves into these harmful environments and we don't know that it's because of an escape. He looked at me, he said, well, either one would need to cut your leg off now. And if we don't do that, the infection spread. And if you get sepsis, then you die. I had a hole on the side of my right hip where the infection was, had been literally leaking from a liter and a half to half a liter of pus every day. It was insane. And this was going on for months and months and months. And then the next day after I did the, the breath work, the second day I woke up and this hole that I had on the side of my hip for a year plus had suddenly gotten smaller. Wow. I noticed that when I was unwell, let's say that I was drinking alcohol, I wasn't sleeping enough, eating unhealthy, stressing, the hole would get bigger. So I'm like, aha. There is a link between unhealthy habits, being unwell, and, and having a hole that's getting worse. And I tried everything, but I'd never done the breath work. And then I woke up the next morning and the hole got smaller. I'm like, holy smokes, this is working. And in three and a half weeks, I fully healed. How does the breath tie back in to living in a beautiful state, into the nervous system and into health and healing? It's really simple. Dr. Espen. Thank you so much for joining me on the Keto Camp Podcast, my friend. It's an absolute privilege. I was just on your show. We connected on the Dr. Espen Podcast. Everybody go subscribe to it. It's an incredible podcast. You've got some incredible guests, people that I study and uh, have inspired me. And I know you have a lot more coming uh, <laughs> on that um, guest thread. But uh, let's talk about this. Quant We're going to get into this quantum awakening. I just love that term quantum awakening. I want to hear your definition of that. But you shared with me when we when we stopped recording on on your podcast, your story. And oh my gosh, then I started to research you some more and read about your story. I talk a lot about pain to purpose uh, and to promise, right? And you have such an incredible, inspiring pain to purpose message. So I'd love for you to go back and share that story about the things that you went through the healing that occurred and what happened as a result of that pain. Yeah, certainly. And I think this is a really great place to start because I think all the listeners and viewers can relate to some sort of, and potentially for some, many painful experiences in life. If we go back and reflect on our past, there's going to be a trauma, there's going to be heartache, there's going to be challenges. So before I move into my story, I'd like everyone listening and watching to feel into a challenge that you've had in the past. It could be a small one or it could be a monumental one, nonetheless. Um, and as I shared with, shared with my students as well, there's, there's a key question that needs to be asked now, which is either one, do you believe that you're only physical? That means that you believe that you are only flesh and bone. You are the body and that's it. Um, or two, do you believe that you are um, a spirit or a soul, some sort of consciousness, some sort of energy that's more than just physical. And Ben, you know, over many, many years, we've done this with tens of thousands of people. 99% of people in our rooms will raise their hand and say, I believe that there's more to me than just flesh and bone. So we kind of then establish a belief system about who we are before we move forward. So I'd like everyone to choose either one. If you're listening now, do you believe that you're only physical? Or two, do you believe that you're physical, but there's also something more to you, perhaps a spirit? Okay. And so from there, that is the core belief system. And whatever you believe, you will achieve. So if you believe that you only have this physical experience, then of course, your, your human experience is limited to the five, or if you include thought, six senses. And two, if you believe that your spirit and consciousness, well, then there's a very different story. So it's neither is right or wrong. It's just simply a matter of what you believe and what you want the belief to be, to live an extraordinary life. And so then, Ben, in regards to the story, I wanted to relate it back to all the listeners and viewers first because it makes it so tangible, so palpable, so practical, and and so applicable because then what I'm about to share now, the listeners and viewers, if you want to, guys, you can segment, a seg segment back to your trauma and do just the same thing. So if you were with me when I was five-year-old, I was uh, uh, born and raised in a tiny little uh, town called Arendelle, which is in the country of Norway in, in Scandinavia, where the Vikings come from. And Arendelle is actually the city that the movie Frozen is based on. And it is similar in many ways. It gets really cold. It's really beautiful. It's quite, um, you know, a, a magical place. It's a small uh, fisherman village in the south of Norway. 
And I remember it like it was yesterday. I was five years old and I woke up um, in the morning on a Tuesday morning in the middle of school holidays. I remember um, July was a summer holiday for us. And I woke up and I was stretching into my little wooden bed that I was sleeping in. I remember I could see my Michael Jackson poster on the wall and my Ninja Turtles poster on the wall. And you just imagine this little five-year-old blonde kid waking up with such enthusiasm in my heart um, because I was going to go outside on the playground and play with all of my friends. And then I heard a horrendous scream. You know, the type of scream that when you hear it, you deep down your nervous system know that something's horribly wrong. And I could tell it was my mother. And so I bounced up out of bed and sprinted down the hallway to my little brother Kevin's room where the screams were coming from. And that's when I experienced my first deep trauma, which was um, the death of my brother. So my little brother Kevin died in, uh, in his bed during the night. And my mum found her son passed away. And my sister June and I were very traumatized by the sight of seeing a blue child, you know, when, when you're that young. And so time went by, you know, mum tried to deal with it and heal through it and without having the tools that, that you, you know, I teach now and many of the tools that you teach as well. Um, and two years after my brother died, my little sister was born, uh, Katinka, her name was, was born disabled. So she's never had a chance to walk. She's never had a chance to run. And so I was, as I was growing up and I was haunted, I was obsessed by two primary questions. And the first question, which pertained to my brother passing away, was why do people, and this is a relevant one for those watching and listening, why do people take life for granted when it truly is so precious? And it's not often until we lose someone that we love or something traumatic happens that we really get to acknowledge the blessing the incredible gift of life. So that was the first question. Why do we take life for granted? And moreover, what does it mean to truly live? I've devoted my life now to helping people find out what it means to truly live. That's what I call quantum living. And then the second question, which pertained to my sister being born disabled, was where does sickness, disease, and suffering come from? Where does it come from? What's the root cause? And how can we not just survive but to thrive? Um, so this took me all over the world. Um, I ended up in Australia where I am now uh, in 2005. And of course, as the universe might have it sometimes, when you haven't learned the uh, appropriate lessons or uh, <laughs> the right amount of lessons or whichever it might be, um, I have a hypothesis that the universe sends you lessons until you truly see the, the cause and the gift in it. And then you don't have to attract even more lessons. But until you do, you might have a tendency to attract a Mack truck in your life because you actually haven't awoken to the truth of your potential or whatever it is yet, you know. So you anyway, know, gonna, I had another it's one. It's going to be either a, a metaphor or a, or a two by four. Oh, I like that. I love that. Absolutely. And, you know, the universe will whisper, right? I always ask this in my events as well. You know, I said to my audience, raise your hand if you've ever had an intuition, like the universe is speaking to you, like you've got to go and do something. You know you need to do something about something, but you didn't do it, right? And so all the hands go up. And then I say, well, raise your hand if you didn't do something and the lesson went away, it never came back. And everyone's like, mm, nope. And that's a raise your hand if it came back and everyone raises their hand, right? And then I say, well, raise your hand if it came back softer and more gentle and no one raises their hand, right? And then the two by four, right? And so we know intuitively that if we don't deal with the shit, the spiritual healing in thyself, <laughs> if you don't deal with that shit, it comes back and smacks you again. So this is why, you know, you and me and so many of your listeners and viewers and so many of our students, we lean in to discomfort. If you truly understand, believe that you are a soul having a human experience, then everything, please listen, everything along your path, everything along anything in the past has happened for you, not to you. Again, take that perspective of the soul and see it as a lesson, as an experience, not as a something that you're a victim of. And nonetheless, Ben, you know, if we believe that we're victims of it, if, if the subconscious mind says something like, I am this way because of him or her, well, then we're going to be firing and wiring a victim-based, autonomic, traumatic, limiting belief system that'll fire and wire trauma in your life until you go back and change the story, change the story, change your life. You're not a victim of your history. You're a master of your destiny. And even if you don't believe in, you know, past lives, even if you don't believe in spirit, that you are a spirit or that you are consciousness or something more, if you just believe that you only are physical, this still works. 
Why? Because all you got to do is to change the story. So you can't change the past. You can change the meaning though. And change the meaning, change your life. And so I came to Australia. This was before I had gotten to know any of the science that I now teach. And then uh, my mum got diagnosed with terminal cancer. The doctor said you got no more than 12 weeks. You know, she applied many of the things that you teach, many of the things that I teach. She lived 16 and a half years. You know, so God bless all the mothers in the world. Yeah, um, but when I knew this, you know, I didn't know about like these tools and techniques and, and technologies that we teach now, kind of fifth dimensional technologies if you want to be a bit esoteric. And so I had that trauma in my body. And what I didn't share before was that I, when I was growing up, my father wasn't around as much. Uh, and my mother was deeply traumatized from the loss of her son and the disabled daughter. Um, she didn't have a job. She she drank alcohol. That was her escape, right? And as you spoke about so beautifully on when I interviewed you a little, you a little while ago, it's like a lot of people have these vices. You know, it could be uh, pornography. It could be drugs. It could be tobacco. It could be alcohol. For many, it's their phone. It's sugar. It's stress, you know, and then we put ourselves into these harmful environments and we don't know that it's because of an escape. So what we do is we take people outside of their environment into a room, scientifically proven room with a sacred space where they can sit with their the stuff of the past because, you know, like I said, fear is fuel as well. So you can actually turn all that fear into fuel, that trauma to transformation, that pit becomes part of your purpose. And so, you know, before I knew all this stuff, I... um. I accumulated the lessons as, you know, spirit wanted me to. So in 2006 in Melbourne, Australia, I crashed a big motorcycle and I snapped off both my legs. I broke both my legs, fractured part of my pelvis. I got a life-threatening hospital infection, a staph aureus infection. And for over a year and two months, I was fighting for my life with a life-threatening infection. And one day I walked into the Royal Melbourne Hospital and the surgeon looked at me and looked at his charts, he shook his head. I had lost 15 kilos at the time. Like now, I don't have a lot of body fat, but I, I knew in my heart that I was dying. And, you know, this type of bacterial infection doesn't respond to antibiotics, but they were pumping me full of drugs just in case, right? And so long story short, he looked at me, he said, well, either one, we'd need to cut your leg off now. Like, we'll take your leg from the hip and down on the right side. Um, and if we don't do that, if the infection spread and if you get sepsis, then you die. And in that moment, Ben, for the first time in my life, never before in my life until that point had I had such an experience, and spirit, God, consciousness, the if you want to keep it scientific, just call it the unified field or my higher self, it doesn't matter. It came through my, my the top of my head like a freaking lightning bolt, man, like boom. And it said, I got one sentence and it didn't change my life, it saved my, saved my life. And it was simply, if it is to be, it's up to me. That was it. That was clear as light. And I just went, like, now I'm the truth bumping. And I just looked at the surgeon. I nodded and said, thanks, doc. And he left the hospital. I literally ripped the intravenous out of my arms. And I left the hospital. And I walked home to my place in Melbourne. I sat up on the bed. And I started doing this. And I kept on breathing and breathing. And I kind of almost passed out. And I didn't know why I was breathing, Ben. I was being directly guided by spirit. Go and do this. And I I had some yoga experience as a yoga teacher, but nothing like this breath work. Anyway, I kind of passed out. I woke up the next, uh, you know, 20 minutes or so, and I'm like, wow, I feel amazing. And what was interesting, Ben, which I didn't expect, was that through the breath work, what, when I was breathing, I was like, I didn't even know why I was breathing. It was just, it felt good, you know? And as I say, when I'm breathing, I'm getting high on my own supply and I feel amazing. What do you think I'm going to do the next day? Oh, I'm never going to do that again. You know, so I wake up the next morning. I'm like, well, feel good. Let's do that again. So I did it again. And I, you know, again, like tooth bumps. And here was what was interesting. While I was doing the breathing, a lot of the trauma came up. You know, I'm in the middle of the breath work and suddenly in my mind, I'm a five-year-old little blonde kid again in, in my brother's bedroom and he's dead. And I'm processing all of these emotions and I'm feeling it in my neck. I'm feeling it in my guts. I'm feeling a crush, crushing sensation around my heart for the sadness and so on. And so I'm breathing and I'm like, whoa, I don't know if this is just me feeling this or if it's, you know, I know now what it is. It was uh, unconscious programming. Um, 
issues in the tissues, the wounding of the emotional trauma stored in the body as part of the unconscious mind. And and it was a psychosomatic disease and it was coming out of me. So I woke up the next morning, I did it twice the second day and I was like, wow, I feel like someone's just taken rocks out of my backpack. My mind is clear, I'm equilibrated, I feel grounded. I don't feel anxiety, I don't feel stress, I don't feel fear. It was the first time for a long time. And then I had this hole, literally imagine this, say three millimeter, between six and three millimeters, I had a hole on the side of my right hip where the infection was, which for the lack of a, you know, try not to make it too disgusting, had been literally leaking from a liter and a half to half a liter of pus every day. So I had to go into the shower in the morning. My leg was massive. I'd go into the shower in the morning. I would squat down and I would pardon, this is disgusting. I would kind of milk my leg to get all this pus out. And, you know, I had I had to hire nurses to come over and cleaners to come over and clean a shower. Like it was insane. And this was going on for months and months and months. And then the next day after I did the, the breath work, the second day I woke up and this hole that I had on the side of my hip for a year plus, why you walk around with a hole in your body for over a year, right? Had suddenly gotten smaller. Wow. And I noticed, Ben, this was really interesting. I noticed that when I was unwell, let's say that I was drinking alcohol, I wasn't sleeping enough, I was eating unhealthy, I was stressing, you know, those things, the hole would get bigger. So I'm like, aha, there is a link between unhealthy habits, being unwell and and having a hole that's getting worse. And I tried everything, you know, I was fasting for 10 days on juice and three of them on water and I was doing all these things, you know, but I'd never done the breath work. And I wasn't as clean as I am am now. I was a student living in Melbourne, you know, like alcohol Mm -hmm. and things like that, you know, those days. And then I woke up the next morning and the hole got smaller. I'm like, holy smokes, this is working. And I've been fighting this disease for a year and two months approximately, well over a year. And then the next day, the third day, and this hole kept getting smaller and smaller. I'm like, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing because this is working, right? Three and a half weeks in after having dealt with this for over a year, the hole finally closed off. And then my leg blew up and all of my lymph nodes, it was like around my hips that each lymph node was like a golf ball. It was insane, man. And then it closed off and then I went into, you know, sweating and, you know, a bit of convulsing, a bit of psychosomatic kind of body letting go of things. And in three and a half weeks, I fully healed. And now I have the authority to stand on the stage in front of hundreds of people and say, yes, the doctor can dress the wound. But the doctor does not do the healing. Okay, so. This is imperative to understand. If you break a bone, the doctor will put it in its right order, but you are the hero. And that was the key, Ben. And I know you teach this, this is why I'm so excited to kind of, you know, go in deep in this podcast. And I hope that listeners and viewers are now going back and feeling into their trauma and just changing the question. How is it happening for me? What am I supposed to learn? What was the gift? You know, what was the meaning? What do I want the meaning to be? And so I did this breath work and I started healing and, and I get I got healthier, fitter, stronger. And now we run what I call the quantum DMT breath work. And I'll do, and if we can go a little bit esoteric, this breath work that I teach, I don't take any credit for it. It's not my breath work. I, I'm the custodian of an ancient technology that has been lost and found. And within 22 minutes, a room, if I have a hundred in the room, I will every single time have a calculated plus 30% rate of physical healing. I will always calculate it, have a 15% minimum out of body, profoundly mystical experience where many of our students enter the higher levels, layers and dimensions, speak with loved ones that have passed over, have interactions with unconditional love, uh, with the superconscious, with the mystical, if you will. And so long story short, I, I was blessed by spirit um, to almost die twice in the hospital with a life-threatening infection. So I could be a simple messenger for the gift of innate intelligence that every person has inside of them. If you get a cut, it'll heal. You don't need to do anything. It will heal because you have innate intelligence. You have spirit. You have consciousness in your body, which is who you are. And if you learn to tap in 
to the power of consciousness, you will turn obstacles into opportunities. And it works for every single person, every single time. Because this superhuman tool of which you breathe, spirit comes into the body. You take your last breath, spirit leaves the body. In many indigenous cultures around the world, the word breath and spirit is the same. So it, it's literally like a superpower, Ben. And you, for the lack of a, you know, fun or not so fun joke, your breath right there hidden. The superpower you need is hidden right underneath your nose and you couldn't leave home even if you tried without it. <laughs> I love, what a story. I, I Oh my gosh, I told y'all watching and listening that Espen had such an incredible story. Just uh, remarkable, brother, the journey that you've been through. And then not, not only that, what's also remarkable is that you're using your authority, not as somebody who's studied so much and has these certifications and degrees. That's not where your authority comes from. Your authority comes from the pain to purpose, to promise. That is where your authority came comes from. And you're teaching this to others. And the breathwork part it's so fascinating to me, you know, it's literally right underneath our nose, right? It's, it's, it's so true. Mm -hmm. It's a free tool like fasting and other amazing free tools, earthing, going outside and just standing on, on, mm -hmm. on the grass or the dirt. And uh, in a way, in, in a big way, we, we have been intentionally brainwashed to forget about these ancient practices, these ancient healing yep. processes with big pharma mm -hmm. and big food and, and, and big government uh, they've intentionally brainwashed us to believe that symptoms and diseases are bad and we should hate them and they're evil, but they're all clues. They're all the innate intelligence's way of telling us hey, something's out of alignment here. Hey, I want to just briefly interrupt the video you're watching to share something with you. One of my favorite companies that I use for health and longevity and biohacking is a company called Bond Charge. And they have a whole range of incredible products, including the blue light blocking glasses you see me wear right now. But one of my favorite products from them is an infrared sauna blanket. That's right. Uh, you don't have to spend a ton of money investing in a sauna or spending so much time driving to a facility with the sauna. They actually created a sauna blanket that you could use in the comfort of your own home. And I use this all the time. Why would we want to even do a sauna? Well, there's a lot of research and a lot of studies showing the benefits of infrared sauna. The sauna blanket works by raising your heart rate to a workout or a training session. So you burn more calories while you're actually lying down and relaxing. You could burn up to 600 calories in one single session. Also, it's going to cause you to sweat. And one method of flushing out toxins from your body is through sweat. There's also one of my favorite benefits, this endorphin release, endorphin rush you get from using a sauna blanket. And I, every time I get out of the sauna blanket, I feel like I just got a 60-minute massage. And uh, that's because of the endorphin benefit from it. So how this works differently than a regular sauna is that it works by using infrared light, which heats the body directly rather than the air around you like a traditional sauna. This means you get the same benefit at a lower heat. So it's easy to set up. It's super convenient. 30 to 40 minutes uh, will suffice in terms of the length of the sessions. And you do that two to three times a week, you're going to feel amazing. Add that to your keto fasting protocol and watch what it does for your results. You could do it while you watch TV. You could do it while you read a book. I do it while I listen to an audio book. So if you want to learn more about the Bond Charge products, including the sauna blanket, head over to bondcharge.com slash keto camp. And if you use the coupon code keto camp at checkout, you'll get 15% off your sauna blanket. And actually any of their products are 15% off with that code. Bond Charge hooked you up. So head over to that domain or click the link down below and go get your Bond Charge products. All right, let's get back to today's video. I, I want to yes. know about the breath work part. You know, th there's some simple things like people are breathing through their mouth too much. They're doing shallow breath and that's problematic. But this is like what you just explained and what you do at your workshops. These are deep healing uh, occurrences that take place. And, and I want to know... Why? Like, how is breath work doing this? You mentioned tapping into consciousness and, you know, revisiting uh, these old stories and recreating new meanings. But if you could talk, speak a little bit more about how breath work is doing this and maybe some some practicality, some practical tips for my audience to start doing things, uh, some, some of these tips on a daily basis. Great. And so we went straight to the story into the superpowers, I guess, into the, the, you know, if you want to look at biohacking tools for peak performance, we went straight to breath, you know, the higher type of breath. Now, this is one type of breath work that I've been, you know, 
developing and creating for now over 15 years since I healed myself and been sharing it ever since. But there is a whole range of breath work. And this is important. So firstly, understanding that there is a direct scientifically proven connection between how you breathe and your nervous system. So to keep it super basic, I know many of your listeners and viewers would be quite advanced, but just to be get the, the basics right, we have the, the sympathetic nervous system of fight or flight, we have the parasympathetic nervous system of rest and digest. Innately, we are hardwired to live in a beautiful state, to be in the parasympathetic rest and digest, what the ancient yogis called the God flow system, that God, the greater organized design, that spirit, that source, that consciousness, that that true essence of life could only flow through you that you could only co-create with the universe if you're in a beautiful state and we know this through the, the you know neuroscience now where we study you know fight or flight you cannot access the executive center of the brain when you're in survival and uh, blood and oxygen leaves a reproductive organs it leaves the heart center because you don't need to be in love or reproduce when you're in survival um, and so it's been hijacked, if you want to use that word, where we should be in a beautiful state 90% of the time and in fight or flight 10% of the time. Now, it seems like if you study most people, particularly in the modern world, they're in fight or flight and stress 90% of the time and in a beautiful state 10% mm, of the time. It's flipped, literally. And be, be it 80-20, you know. But the problem is, all you got to do now, if you were to place your attention upon the things that's, you know, are marketed to us upon the things that's uh, sensationalism out there to capture our attention, it's fear-based because fear-based taps into the hindbrain right away, we've got your attention, and it just rinses and repeats, rinses and repeats. And I think it's still significantly underrated, um, the, the, the statement of you must be impeccable with what you feed your mind. Impeccable. You know, in the imprint period of the child, ages one to seven, where their entire blueprint of reality is born, is created, is, is molded. You know, a child watches it, uh, you know, sees something, you know, on TV of a person being murdered. The child's conscious mind, 5% of their reality goes, ah, it's just a movie. It's just on TV. The child's subconscious mind, 95% of its reality and its blueprint neurologically created goes, oh, someone is being murdered. It's time to secrete cortisol. It's time to shut down the heart. It's time to step into fear. And of course, we don't think of it because there's just like something happening on the idiot box on the side. So there's just so much. There's just, it's just everywhere. So for me, I'm impeccable with what I feed my mind. And it must be love-based, high-frequency-based, not fear or stress-based because that shit's going to be in your life either way. And then you step into the warrior, then you overcome it. You bear it better to be a warrior in a garden than the gardener in a war, but you don't want to feed your nervous system with fear. Very, very, very important. What, what, what do you, one. So what do you do when mm -hmm. you're working on this, you're feeding your, your garden of the mind with positive thoughts, love, abundance, et cetera, but then you have that stinking thinking thought that creeps in. What are some tips to uh, uh, shorten that gap between staying there and choosing a better thought? How do you shorten that gap? Well, firstly, the, the, the greatest tool to always use is to really do this work and equilibrate the emotional wounding on the inside, the emotional wounding, the, the stuff that's in the tissues, because that's really where the programming come from, comes from. So we can talk about that in, in a bit more detail. The bottom line is that the, the average person has a lot of traumas, uh, a lot of, you know, trauma here. They, they throw the, world, uh, the word around, but uh, uh, the average person has a lot of uh, situations of the past experiences of the present um, that they haven't equilibrated. That's still a challenge for them. You know, many people, as you know from my last chat, they'll go out and they'll, you know, they'll eat sugar and they'll do um, unhealthy habits and they'll smoke and they'll drink and they'll have alcohol and they'll be addicted to their phone and addicted to materialism and addicted to drama or whatever. And they don't really recognize that one, they don't want that, you know, and if they do recognize that they don't want that, they don't recognize the cause of it. And the cause of it is never, hey, oh, I'm just a little bit stressed with my money. No, you don't have a money problem. You have a money program, right? Just think about the thoughts, like the feelings in the household around the topic of money when you grew up. Was it love-based, safety, security, trust-based? No. Nope, or was it stress or, stress or fear-based? Yep. Same with me. So then our students, 97% of our students, which are conscious people, 
When I take them back through closed eye meditation and hypnosis and they go back to the childhood, 97% say, shit, my earliest impression, my earliest imprint around the topic of money is stress, fear, don't have enough, be careful. It's fear-based. And they don't know that they live that way throughout their entire life thinking that it's a lack of money, but it's not a lack of money. You're living in Australia, you're living in America, you're living in whatever country you live in. Would it not be fair to say that you're abundant? You and I are more abundant than 80% of the world's population that has no clean food, no clean water, and, and hardly any shelter. Yeah. So why are we living? Why are so many people living in scarcity? It's not a money problem. It's a money program. And it started from childhood, and we need to go back and reprogram the unconscious mind from fear to abundance if you wish to live in abundance. Because you don't attract what you want. If you attracted all the millions that you wanted, you would have had all the millions, yes? You don't attract what you want. You attract what you are vibrationally. And so if that can sink in, it's a reprogramming thing. So back to the whole breath thing. There is a direct connection between breath and either the sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight, survival, cortisol secreting from your adrenal glands, reduction of your immune system, la 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 la. And a potential, let me be gentle, a potential vested interest for some of the people that are dominating the world to keep us in that state. Because when you're in that state, you're very easy to control. And when you're in that state, you're very easy uh, to become a consumer, a consumer of materialism, a consumer of uh, obviously fear, a consumer of sugar, a consumer of all these things. And that makes a lot of money. As I say, good health makes a lot of sense. It doesn't make a lot of money. That's right. So that's one side of it if you want to be a little bit like that. But, you know, all, all, all things aside, what we do know is that when you tap into breathing, I'll give you a really sure, powerful tool. When you breathe through your nose and into the belly. So let's do this now. We'll take a breath in through our nose, into the Buddha belly, belly open, relax, and then exhale. Try that one more time. Breathing in slowly through the nose, perhaps feeling an inner smile, into the belly, and slowly relax. And already you can start to feel this peace, this groundedness happening through your body. Because when you're breathing through your nose, particularly slowly and into your belly, you're going to be stimulating the parasympathetic nervous system. The way this works is if a tiger or a, or, or a predator was, was chasing you, if you actually were in danger, you wouldn't breathe through your nose because you can't get enough oxygen fast enough to get away from, from, the, from the danger. So you breathe through your mouth. So then when you breathe through your mouth, you're stimulating the sympathetic nervous system of fight or flight, normally breathing into the upper part of the chest. And this is chronically, Ben, where most people are living. They're breathing through their mouth, unconscious, and they're breathing through the upper part of the chest. And so what's happening now, like I mentioned earlier, there's a program. And it's like you start the computer in the morning and you press the program and the program runs in the background, it runs all the time, but you're not seeing it because you're looking at some other things. So now you're breathing through your mouth and you're breathing to the upper part of the lungs. And what you don't know now is that not only are many people focusing on fear and stress and what they don't have, but they're also now breathing through the mouth and the upper part of the lungs. So they're automatically firing and wiring this sympathetic nervous system and then they're wondering why they've got, you know, burnout, adrenal fatigue, why they're holding on to so much fat, you know, around the midsection and so on and so forth. Why? Because your body thinks that you're in danger. You must hold on to fat in case of starvation, you know, the stuff that you teach. Yeah. And so a simple exercise, since we know that our breath is directly related to not just the, the sympathetic or parasympathetic nervous system, but to the autonomic part of the nervous system. You know, the vagus nerve, the phrenic nerve, so many of the other ways that we can tune the nervous system. If we were to choose to simply be aware of our breath, we'll do this one more time, everybody. If you want to join me, breathing in through the nose, aware that you're breathing in, breathing out through the nose, aware that you're breathing out. We just meditated then. And this is important for everyone listening. The Buddha said, it's, it's called anapana, the inhale, the exhale. So when you're aware of the inhale, I'm breathing in. And you're aware of the exhale, I'm breathing out. You are actually meditating. That's how simple it is. No, the mind is not supposed to be perfectly equilibrated and still. I've talked to masterful meditators that have been meditating for 40 years. And I asked them, 
how's the mind? And they're like, more difficult to control than the wind. <laughs> yes. It's true. supposed to go off. It's supposed to come back. It's supposed to go off. Then you bring it back. That is meditation. So please don't ever tell me that I can't meditate because my brain's too busy. That's like saying I can't go to the, to the gym because my muscles are too big. <laughs> That's good. Everybody who just <laughs> did exercise just meditated. <laughs> Yes, exactly. That's my point. You know, and saying that you, you, your mind's too busy to meditate or you don't have time to meditate, it's like saying that you're too dirty to take a bath. It just doesn't <laughs> make sense. Like my meditations teacher says, if you can't meditate 20 minutes a day, just do three hours instead. <laughs> yeah, you need it it's more for sure. It's a great point, right? And so then I guess what I'm saying, since you're asking, how does the breath tie back in to living in a beautiful state? into the nervous system and, and into health and healing, it is really freaking simple. It's really simple. You've got two primary parts of the nervous system, stress and presence, contraction, expansion, fear and love, sympathetic, parasympathetic, okay? Contraction, expansion. And when you realize that for the majority of people, you're spending too much time unconsciously firing and wiring a stress response and that it's pretty easy to change your breath into the parasympathetic God flow system by being aware of your breath. I'm breathing in by taking a slow breath, by breathing through the nose, by slowing down, doing everything a little bit slower, you will automatically start to enjoy the benefits more fat burning, getting rid of the fat that you don't want, more presence, more peace, more joy, uh, better sleep, uh, a much more equilibrated, relaxed body, and so on and so forth. So in general, if you were to look at it, the breath, uh, and, and there's so many amazing books out there on the breath, but to summarize, there is a direct correlation, a hand in glove connection between the state of your nervous system and how you're aware, not aware, and or um, mastering or not mastering your awareness of breath. Really well done. Really, really important conversation. And, uh, you know, just to piggyback, uh, on what you just shared when it comes to the nervous system in the keto space and the fasting space, the biohacking space, we do a lot of these biohacks, cold plunge, fasting, red light therapy. Had one this morning. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Love and they're it. all great stressors when you're adapting to it, right? One of the best ways to increase this hormetic ceiling so you could do more cold plunging and do more fasting and do more of these stressors and get stronger and healthier is to balance out that nervous system and what an easy what what better way to do that that's easy and effective than focusing on your breath like you just said in through the nostril not the mouth but the nostril out through the nostril slowing it down observing the breath breathing through your belly not through your chest doing that and for those who wear aura rings or, or track heart rate variability, what you're going to see, yeah, you got, is that a whoop in, Espen? Whoop, yeah. Yeah, whoop is great. So for those uh, tracking the HRV, that is giving you a gauge on how well you're balancing that nervous system, parasympathetic. We wanna see that increase over time. So you find your average and build that up. But if you start to incorporate the, the, these exercises with the breath work, you're gonna notice that HRV is gonna increase then that increases your capacity to do more cold plunge. You know, what What, what kind of um, is a pet peeve of mine, and I don't know if you could relate to this, Espen, in this biohacking space, we talk about cold plunging, which I love. I have a plunge here. We talk about fasting. These are all stressors, but not everybody adapts to these stressors. Not everybody could do a 24-hour fast and actually benefit. Not, anybody, not everybody could do a three-minute cold plunge or five-minute cold plunge and benefit because their nervous system is so out of balance. So instead of benefiting yeah. from that stress and increasing this hormetic ceiling, they get out of that Goldilocks effect and actually make themselves worse. So I'm saying all of this because if you use breath work, the way that Espen just illustrated it, very simple to do. You could do it while you're driving to work, by the way, just make sure you're not exactly. closing your eyes in and the you, car. And you, and you should. Yeah, and you should, especially <laughs> if you're going to work. Why not? Uh, Why listen to the radio? Like, come on, be with your yeah. breath for a moment. You're driving anyway. Do yourself a favor. 100%. I love how you call the TV the idiot box. That's good too. <laughs> uh, but you know, you implement this breath work, you're going to notice a difference. Uh, and just one more thing here before we move to the next topic 
do it before you eat a meal. What it does to build stomach acid and process food yeah. better and assimilate. You want to be, maybe you could talk more about that, why we want to be in a parasympathetic state to process food and how so many people who have digestive issues, acid reflux included, are in the sympathetic state and they're not able to process food. So maybe you could share more about what's going on there. The metabolic process is really interesting. And we know this as well. If you look at the sympathetic parts of the nervous system, you are actually moving blood away from the stomach area and from digestion in general when you're in fight or flight. Again, if there's a lion chasing you, you don't need to be digesting you know, the food that you ate 20 yeah. minutes ago. Or eliminating you, in, uh, uh, pooping either. Nada. You just need to get away. You, there's blood and oxygen to your arms and legs. So you can fight or flight or freeze. I mean, we know the, the old story. But what people don't understand is that this is in your nervous system. So as uh, Tony Robbins' spiritual mentor said, I, I had a chance to be the MC for her. Her name is Preeta G. She says, there are only two states. And Tony teaches this and many teachers. There's only two states. There is contraction, expansion, stress and presence, fear and love. As we said, in that fear-based state, in the sympathetic nervous system, blood and energy, life force in general, goes away from the digestive system so you can fight or flight. So you're now having major issues because people don't know this, or I think many people don't know this, but it takes a tremendous amount of energy to break down the calories that you eat, yeah. a tremendous amount of resources to get that done. And honestly, the greatest change for me has been rec recognizing that most people are overfed and undernourished. That is overfed and undernourished. Now, when I started my fasting, my intermittent fasting, and I live intermittent fasting, Monday to Friday, I only eat eight hours a day. Okay, so I eat for eight and I fast for 16. I don't eat until lunch and I go until probably 7, 7 p.m. And then I go to bed around nine, normally. So I give my, my body this huge window. And when I started fasting, intermittent fasting, 10 days of water fasting, you know, not recommending this right away. You need to, you know, move into it more and more and become adaptive. You're, you know, ketogenic first fat adaptive burning fat. And then you can start to, you really enjoy these amazing superhuman tools that every tradition and religion around the world have been using for thousands of years. And you've been hijacked to think about sugar the moment you work up because you're not in ketosis. You are in a fat burning sugar, oh, excuse me, sugar burning, you know, that type of metabolism. So when I started fasting, I had to sit again with all these emotions. And I realized, Ben, and for me, I'm, you know, if I can say so, quite advanced in this space compared to the average person. I realized how much I was eating because of my emotions. Mm. So much. And then I was fasting and I'm like, oh, anger is coming up and anger is coming up and it makes me go and want, you know, something rather. And, and stress is coming up, you know, anxiety is coming up. Oh shit, I want to go have fruit. It's like, whoa, where's this coming from? That's a cause inside effect outside. I'm going to have to deal with this. So I fasted it all out of my system. And now, you know, I know that often when I'm hungry, I'm thirsty. And I know often when I'm hungry, I'm not hungry. I'm emotional and it's much better now. But if I can give you some context, like this is so underrated for the average person. And so when it comes to eating, metabolizing and all that stuff in general, firstly, your metabolism is going to be so significantly improved. If one, you give it a bit of a break, you know, just not continuously hounding it with food like products, creating bioaccumulating accumulating toxins, cut some of that out. Put some quality nutrition in. Like, I'll be drinking celery juice today until noon, right? And then I'll have my first meal. Maybe I have normally two meals a day, that's it. And man, I'm in my 40s. I am so fit, so strong. Elite level athlete, 125 average heart rate variability. That's a 20-year-old wow. like Olymp Olympic athlete. That's really I'm 40, good. Yeah. right? And that's my average. Average resting heart rate, 38 beats per minute. Nice. You know, that, that, that sort of stuff. And, but it comes from these one equilibration of the traumas and emotions on the inside because they lead to the choices on the outside. It is not the other way around. You don't do a fad diet. You don't change. You don't do none of that. You go on the inside. You change to what's happening on the inside. Once you've equilibrated and heal your emotions and your programs of the past, you don't want the donut. Okay. You don't want those things because you're already feeling great. So you don't want them. And I think that's a really big thing that I've realized for me, giving digestion a break, 
eating clean, lean, green, clean, healthy, organic foods, you know, and most importantly, as I said, equilibrating our emotions because we eat so much and whatever else, drink so much and have so many things because of the emotional state that's on the inside. Well said, bro. Well said. One of the things that helps me make a better decision for my goals and my lifestyle, uh, and this works for me and somebody could adopt it if they want to try it, give it a shot. Um, when I have a, when I'm at like a, a party or like for, I'll give you an example. It was Thanksgiving here just a few days ago here in, in the United States. And I'm doing carnivore right now. I'm, I'm on day 58 of carnivore, nothing but meat, <laughs> meat and fat for 58 days and fasting, of course. So what are you eating meat and what kind of fat? Just the fat that comes with the meat, uh, maybe some butter that I, that I'll cook the meat with, with um, eggs, seafood, uh, sheep and goat dairy are primarily when it comes to dairy, but yeah, meat carnivore essentially. And it was Thanksgiving, and um, there was all this amazing food. My mom made this incredible feast meal. She's such an incredible cook. And I'm doing carnival, right? And it's like I, I, I committed to myself to do these 60 days and, and do some testing with it, and I didn't want to skew those testing results. I wanted to commit to it for my audience because I'm mm -hmm. going to share all that with my audience. So I'm there at the dinner, and I see all this amazing food, and the only thing that I could really eat and, and if I want to stay congruent with this goal is the turkey. Um, so one of the things that helps me when I'm in these situations is thinking about morning Ben, right? When I wake up in the morning and then is that morning version of me going to say, good job, like you stuck with carnivore, you said you were gonna do it, or is he gonna say, I thought you were gonna do carnivore, why did you break it and, and have some little, a, a little bit of some doubt in, in previous, like the night before Ben, right? So I think about what morning Ben will say. And I thought about morning Ben, I'm like, I'm gonna make morning Ben proud. I'm gonna stick with this because I said I was going to. And I did, I just ate the turkey and I woke up the next morning and I was like, good job nighttime Ben, you did a good job. So for me that works. I just think about that conversation I'm gonna have with myself the next morning. Mm. I love that and honestly, Am I right to swear on this podcast or not? <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to say something now, and I'm going to say this from the perspective of being a coach um, and with a background as a physician. So I graduated in 2009. I started practicing in clinic in 2010. I recruited and hired as 27 different doctors and physicians. Anything from medical doctors, naturopaths, dentists, chiropractors, physios, yoga teachers, Pilates, and you name it, pathology, radiology, we had it all. So I, I, I founded, co-founded this multidisciplinary um, fr franchise of health clinics, and I personally owned 10, 10 of those clinics before I retired from clinical practice. I saw 14,000 patients in clinics. We did clinical trials wow. with hundreds of people. So I've got a fair bit of experience in owning clinics, managing medical doctors, um, doing blood tests, uh, you know, like I said, chiropractors checking spines and nervous systems, crucial. Like if you don't have a good chiropractor, if you don't know the condition of your spine and nervous system right now, well, to see is to know, not to see is to guess. So there are some bad ones out there, but seriously, that's like a GP. That's like an MD. That's like anyone. Go and find a good integrative doctor. Have a really good naturopath. Have a really good personal trainer. And for God's sakes, have a good chiropractor. So just segueing on that a bit, but that's my clinical background. I've got a lot of training in this. I got my doctorate in 20, uh, 2009. Now, I segued from being a full-time physician and clinic owner to being a full-time coach. That's what I do for a living. I teach people how to live incredible lives, personal, professional, and spiritual development. So if it's okay, I'm gonna speak to you as a coach, and, and I'm gonna speak to you like the kind of coach that I would want, okay? Not the kind of coach where, Let's say you go to your trainer and you know, you got to meet at 5 p.m. and do a, a personal training session. If you get there at 5.05, my trainer's not going to go, hey, great to see you. Let's get started. My trainer's going to go, you're fucking five minutes late. Okay. That is 10 burpees for every minute. That's 50 burpees and go. I don't hire a trainer if they don't give me that. I pay for accountability. And I'll tell you one thing you mentioned, ice baths and these things before, and this is where I come across quite strong. And, and I hope that it's received beautiful by your listeners, because if they're listening to your podcast, if they're seeing this show, they're not the, the person that just wants an ordinary, mediocre life. Okay, you want excellence, you're willing to go deep to sit at that dinner table to look at that turkey and all of the other things and go, I'm with the fucking turkey.
And it has nothing to do with the turkey. It's everything to do with your mind. Because some of you listeners and viewers, you have really dropped the ball. You've been selling yourself short. You've been playing the benchmark at this level. That's been your level. No, your spirit, your soul is limitless. You're at an absolute next level, but you're not behaving like you're at that level. Mm. You're not behaving like you're at that level. You're eating the sugar. You're yelling at your wife, your husband. Like you're not meditating. So I'm going to say right now, step up. You know that you have powerful potential. Why are you living like that? You know, so when I'm a coach, when I'm on stage, I did this on the weekend. I had 200 people in my room and I said, do I have your permission to speak my truth? And this was coming up to the throat energy center, the throat chakra and about expressing ourselves. And I was saying the number one common regret of thousands of people in a clinical trial. If you read the book, the five common regrets of the dying, the number one regret is I wish I had the courage to live a life true to me and not the life that other people expected of me. So people, Ben, are subordinating to outer influences, to other people, to governments, to their outdated programs. And with so much potential, with so much power and opportunity, beauty and growth, the level that people are playing at, no, nah, absolutely not. So what I've loved to do is when I get in the ice bath, as an example, it could be anything, I'm not in the ice bath going, yeah, it feels so great and I'm so comfortable right now. No one does that. Come on. You, you know that's not comfortable. I'm in the ice bath going, I'm in control of my mind. My mind is not controlling me. I'm walking the dog. The dog is not walking me. The mind is a powerful thing and I need to wield it. And if I don't do that, if I can't get have a cold shower this morning, what else am I avoiding? Mm -hmm. And you know, those five minutes in the ice, whatever it is, that moment of fasting when I'm hungry and I'm overcoming it because I could just come back to my breath. And that morning Ben that wakes up and goes, I did it. And it was only 60 days. How are you going to enjoy the potatoes and the vegetables and all these yummy things? If you don't let them go, how are you going to enjoy coffee? If you don't stop coffee, how are you going to enjoy alcohol? If you don't control your alcohol consumption. And so there is this, this part where I'm either in control, I'm mastering my life or I'm being overpowered. So when I'm a coach for my students, we go through eight areas of life, physical, mental, emotional, financial relationships, personal development, career, business, vocation, spiritual fulfillment, purpose, and time. And I'm not interested in any of these areas being anything but what they can be. And by the time I lean in to discomfort, that's what I believe conscious people do. You know, for me, I run multiple seven figure businesses. When you run multi-million dollar companies, you cannot shy away from discomfort. You cannot go, oh, there's a staff member that did something. I'm going to wait until next week because the universe will go shabang. <laughs> so I need to condition myself as a leader to lean in consciously and lovingly, but fully lean in to the things that I haven't mastered in my life. Otherwise, it'll rinse and repeat an autonomic nervous system of uh, submission, passive submissive, not empowered. And of course, everything on the outside will be not what I want. So thank you for receiving that strength of message. And, and for him, when I say the level that you're playing out is not the level that your spirit's at. So ask yourself the question, what do you want to do? Step up, lean in and go quantum. Because when you go quantum, you will truly make the rest of your life the best of your life. And after that yoga practice in the morning, after that ice bath in the morning, you are zen for the rest of the day. And anything that might have been a challenge, your kids doing something, your husband, your wife yelling at you, something popping up in business will be a breeze. Why? Because you've already overcome a challenge in the morning. So again, are you walking the dog or is the dog walking you? Who's in charge? Who are you? And what do you want to do for the rest of your life? Mm, so good. <laughs> we could just take that clip right there, the last five minutes or so of you just teaching us and with your brilliance. For those listening and watching, maybe you want to save those last five minutes and listen to that part for the next 90 days. Are you You'll be walking lit. a dog? 
Oh yeah, yeah. is your or the dog walking you? It's so true. These these disciplines they transfer. You know that eighteen hour mm -hmm. fast, that discipline that transfers to other areas, mm -hmm. and the way you coach, it's not from a place of authority. I, I don't feel that. It's not a place of like speaking down to people. It's not calling out people. It's calling them up to mm -hmm. their potential. Um, so those listening and watching, listen to that part over and over and over again. That that it's going to get you inspired and in action because it's so true. We have this limitless potential, and we barely have scratch the surface on it literally um, scientifically proven even right and so there's so much in this now and, and every person gets to choose you know if you choose to play at that level if you say you know turning over 100 grand a year or earning 100 grand a year is okay for me i just want to be a stay-at-home mom stay-at-home dad you know chop wood carry water the old you know paradigm of enlightenment that's beautiful do that but then you're aware of that and you don't need to push anything beyond that you need to stretch yourself always but that's okay but if you want to leave a legacy and do something else you're going to have to fall in love with challenges. You have to fall in love with problems. The biggest problem many people have is they think they shouldn't have any, right? We're not here to have a breeze and a cruise. We had to become, become, to become empowered, right? And that right. comes with opportunities. Yeah. There's uh, experiments done on uh, uh, temperature and uh, controlled environments with uh, plants. And when there's no wind, there's no challenges, the plants die, but when you add the wind component, they actually get stronger and grow, right? We need the challenge. It's like Jim Rohn said, it's not about, I wish it was easier. I wish this was easier. It's not about it being easier. It's about you being better, us being better, me being yeah. better. Um, I have one final question for you, but before I get to the final question, um, your website is drespen.com, D-R-E-S-P-N, E-S-P-E-S-P-N. Uh, yeah. dot com espen dot com i'll put that in the notes down below uh you hold workshops and uh they're incredible they're life-changing you also have the dr espen podcast which we'll reference down below you have a youtube channel which we'll reference down below on instagram you're at dr underscore espen hey, i want to take a minute to share something with you as we take a break from the video you're watching you know, one of the most common things I see to why people don't have enough energy levels, they have trouble building lean muscle mass, they have brain fog, fatigue, and they don't feel good is because of a deficiency in a hormone called testosterone. Now, testosterone is a very important hormone to have in a healthy amount for both men and for women. So how do you reclaim your vitality? How do you reclaim this very important fat burning and muscle building hormone well, you can do it with a powerful supplement called Upgraded T. It has been my go-to for naturally elevating testosterone levels. Upgraded T is from Upgraded Formulas, and it contains the highest quality of ingredients that have been proven scientifically to increase testosterone production. Now, as I mentioned, if you're a woman watching this, this is very important for you just as a man watching this right now. Upgraded tea is a natural and safe way to boost testosterone levels. When you boost testosterone levels, it's going to increase your sex drive, vitality. It could help replace fatigue with all-day energy. It'll help you lose that stubborn belly fat. Uh, testosterone is required for fat burning, so it'll help you with the last 5 to 10 pounds that you're looking to lose. It helps you be in a better mood, helps with your memory and focus. So here's the three-step approach. Step one. Take two capsules of upgraded tea with water every morning. It does not break your fast. You can have it with food or without food. Step number two, notice your energy levels and dominate your day with more confidence and more vitality. Step number three, wake up the next day having better sleep and just keep doing what you're doing. As simple as that. So if you want to get your hands on upgraded formulas, upgraded tea, and any of their awesome products like their upgraded magnesium and their hair mineral analysis testing kit, Head over to UpgradedFormulas.com, and if you use the coupon code KETOSIS at checkout, they're going to give you 15% off your entire order. That is UpgradedFormulas.com, KETOSIS at checkout. We're going to drop that link down below, and let's get back to today's video. The last question for you is about my favorite supplement in the world, which has been proven to be anti-inflammatory, anti-aging, great for your sirtuins and longevity genes, great for blood sugar, great for fasting and keto. I could go on and on. And that supplement, it's called vitamin G. Uh, I call it vitamin G. It's because it's vitamin gratitude and what gratitude does to put you in this parasympathetic healing state. So Espen, I want to ask you, what do you have vitamin G for today as we close this interview? Oh, thank you so much. Firstly, um, for everybody listening, 
Um, if you believe, like I believe, that you're spirit infused, that your consciousness, that you're more than just flesh and bone, then in this instance, there might be a divine design to the fact that you're listening to us right now. And it might be a divine design or a purpose behind you sharing this with someone to change your life or several lives. And so my gratitude is firstly for the opportunity to be able to share my message with so many people listening. And if they only take one action, do one thing, hug someone that they love, uh, turn off the TV when they're talking about fear-based stuff, you know, fast for a bit, um, know their potential, get a coach, whatever it might be, then I am, you know, I've done my job. Um, I know through gratitude, as I say, it's the ultimate state of receivership. Again, in every ancient culture and every uh, tradition and religion, uh, the, it's been said, as it says even in the Bible, if you focus on what you're grateful for, you get more to be grateful for. If you focus on the things that you don't have, you're going to get more things that you don't want. So it is a fundamental constituent of a beautiful life. And I think it's imperative that when we remember what we focus on is what we find. How would you expect the universe to give you more things to be grateful for if you don't already cultivate wholehearted gratitude for the things that you've been blessed? I'm grateful to, to my breath. I'm grateful to be a father. I'm grateful for everything. I'm grateful for my challenges. Mm. I'm grateful for my pain. I'm, if there's anything along my timeline, past, past, and future that I cannot say wholeheartedly thank you and I love you for, I haven't equilibrated it and I haven't healed it. And that's the bottom line for me. It's a fundamental way of living. And even though in the moment it might not feel like I've got something to be grateful for, I always bring my focus back because I know that what I focus on is what I find. So I'm grateful to great spirit, to the creator. I'm grateful to life. I'm grateful to everything and the opportunity to be here with you, brother, to connect with you, to be with your audience. And um, I'd like to pass that on to the audience too, just in your mind's eye to think about three things that you're wholeheartedly grateful for and maybe even take the opportunity today to express that to those people or whoever it might be. Wow. I've, I've asked that question to hundreds of people at the end of uh, these conversations. And that, that was the best... Um best answer i've heard about vitamin g so thank you for sharing that bro I'm, I'm grateful for you i'm grateful for your work and your dedication and and how you show up most importantly uh it's very easy to have a conversation with you it really is and you could just it's obvious that you care it's obvious that you let, that you know the science and know what you're doing and making a big difference in this world we need we need more people like you um the world is it's just beautiful abundant place and it's because of people like you so thank you espen i'm grateful for you brother uh, i already look forward to uh Another conversation with you. Our, our third conversation will happen uh, in the near future. So appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much for your time today. Absolute privilege and a pleasure. If you guys want to learn more, I do a thing called the Quantum Experience, where you can go and do a, a, an experience online, where I teach the science and also facilitate the breath work at the end. So you guys are welcome. Thanks, Ben, for doing what you're doing. You are indeed changing millions and soon a billion lives. Love you, bro. Thank you. Appreciate Love you, you, mate. Bro. Thank See you. everybody.